Welcome to Forever Exiled. I'm Justin AK Tags. And I'm Tyler Wrecker of Days. Episode 236. Yes, 236. Yeah, right? you did yeah, it. Nice I did. guess. I saw two side by side. I got scared for a minute. Uh, 236 of Forever Exiled. Uh, big shout out to our patrons. Thanks everybody for supporting the Patreon and uh, Forever Exiled. Patreon gets you access to After Dark. It's our podcast after the podcast where we just continue to talk about stuff and things. And sometimes it ends up being more POE. It's the funny, episode, the, last but, month, the last month has been more PoE than normal life, but... You just never know. It's all out in, all, uh, we just talk. We just wing it, and whatever comes up, comes up. But uh, yeah, thank you, patrons, and everybody who supports the podcast, and everybody who resubbed up this past week. We love your faces. Um, how's your week? It was a good week. It was a good yeah. week. Um, sorry I'm late, and thank you for your patience. I said I was ready, and then um, normally I'll just do chores until you know you're ready in case you're going to be... 20 minutes, two minutes, right. whatever it's going to be. It was one of those where it's like a two second job. Mm -hmm. It ends up being much longer because you notice something that you shouldn't leave around. So, you know, I'm like switching the dog water bowls, you know, right. And uh, making sure the cat food's up, doing the cat litter. Well, there's this in there's we have this really narrow alcove that perfectly fits. It's like a it, it's just it's pointless space in the house with the exception of you could put shelves in there and have this really weird like three foot wide sure. spot but like seven feet deep <laughs> closet so it's yeah, not yeah. even like you could reach the back so it's just this weird part of the house anyway that's a perfect place for the cat litter on the bottom there mm -hmm. and it's right beside the wall that's between the house and the garage right mm -hmm. it's the garage wall and just recently we, there's a whole bunch of bugs that are getting in through there and they oh. just stay on the wall. Like I don't know what, kind, like of what kind of bug. No, no, oh, they fly, but they're also dumb because when you get close to squish them, they don't move. <laughs> they just they just get squished and they pop <laughs> too. So it's kind of satisfying to kill them. But huh. there's there was a time where there was about like fifteen of them wow. all on the w same wall, and I'm like, where are they coming from? What are they doing? So it was, and I've been trying to pay attention to it without standing there all day and seeing where they're getting access to the house from. Yeah, I found a slit oh, did just you? between like it's it's on the garage wall between it's on that wall that connects that's, you know, shared with the garage. There's a small little little itty bitty piece that was there. The only one that was to run for its life went in there and I'm like, ah. <laughs> so I went around to the other side of the garage. I'm like, ah, I see it. And so I didn't want to wait. Uh, I went and quickly got it. It's a spider spray, but whatever. Like when we were having. Uh, it seemed like spider issues under the stairs um, just after the flood that we had a couple years ago. Uh, I went to town. There was a big thing. And my wife, she's pretty scared of spiders. So, you know, you don't, you know, it's nice to be comfortable in your own house. So I went downstairs and I sprayed this spider stuff, this whatever it is, all over this one area where I thought the spiders were coming from. And of course, there was a bunch of webs down there too, under the stairs. And even now, like that's where our water regulator is and that's where access to the water is in the house as well so i'm down there often enough doing house things and every single time i go down there whether it's once a week once a month whatever it is every single time there's like five new dead spiders it's been like two years since i sprayed under the stairs and it's, it's like working. it's still there <laughs> right it's still there so i'm like you know what i'm getting that stuff no matter what it is so anyway i grabbed that and i sprayed all around the cat litter area and those things so I'll nice. seal it up, but I wanted to make sure I dealt with that first. And uh, so that was it. Besides that, it. life's fantastic, man. The Fallout TV show came out this week. Yeah, and we're going to watch that this week. We'll start it this week. We're, we're only two episodes in, but it's not dumb. I've heard it's, it's very really good, and I'm really yeah. excited to watch it. it they didn't, like, uh, there's been other shows about content that you like, and it's finally turning into a TV show, and almost all the time you're like, the, the director sucks. Like, who are they making this movie for? It's not even interesting. Like, it's not even like I was hoping it would follow a certain storyline or follow this. Like, it's just like the whole package deal good. sucks. And yeah, it, it is. It's very good. Um, So far, again, only two episodes in. Christina's going to watch it with me. She never season. played Fallout. So Aww. we'll see what she thinks of it because I'm going to love it just because you but will. I was I, I say I was saying to her, I think she'll still enjoy it because if the, if they can at least tell the story like the game kind of did, there's stuff there. It, it'll be fun. So that was one thing. Bethesda was 
always a good storyteller. And some of my favorite Bethesda stories weren't the main story. They were the side stories. This yeah. little story you discover while hacking an overseer's uh, computer or, right. you know, a, a note you find in a locker. And uh, but it's one of those things. So uh, for Christina's sake, um, expect you for you expect to watch it twice there within the first but it, it's just loaded with nerdy details cool like it, 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 seriously within like the first three minutes of the show aaron's already paused it like eight times oh you remember when oh my goodness i can't believe they did oh they have the magazine oh they have that oh, it's, cool. just, it's it's non-stop so for christina's sake just expect yourself to watch it a second time so you can oh my goodness all by yourself mm -hmm. later on because oh, cool. it's pretty awesome yeah but anyway it's just been a good week besides that man same as usual the weather's great the lawns i mean we're still going to five degrees at night so it's still a little too cold for blooming some plants still look like it's winter time some like my magnolia tree it's almost finished blooming already so yeah it's been a weird spring but it's all the same it's been good it's been good how about you now uh, we just had our lawn treated for grubs so oh good. again yeah. Uh, no, we like didn't. They do came it. back, or it's just the end of the process. This is well. This is the process of starting to treat for grubs because uh, we didn't have it treated. We thought we had treated before last time, and then the grubs brought in all the raccoons and the crows. So, so it's been treated now, and I've just told the guy because he was like, "I thought you kind of wanted to like take care of some of the lawn stuff yourself." I'm like, "I did. I don't just do it. Like uh, <laughs> the." the, the the bulk of it, I just, I don't have the time to it. I don't remember to. So you just, you tell me what needs to be done and let's do it. Uh, so anyway, otherwise though, my week was garbage, man. Like it was, I had my daughter super sick, like puking sick on the Myra weekend. Sophia. Yeah, Sophia. And so uh, it was brutal. Like we got no sleep for two nights. She was, then she started to run a fever, which of course with her is we get a little bit stressed Terrifying. out. It's, it's a yeah. little bit better. Like she hasn't had any of the federal seizures um, since she was little, but still you just, we couldn't yep. control it because she couldn't keep anything down. So you stress out a little bit about that. And then uh, I ended up getting sick. Logan ended up getting sick. Uh, just a cold, but I hate colds. A colds make me so angry. A sore throat to me is the worst of anything because I can't do anything. I don't know what to do to stop a sore throat. Like, uh, take tea and warm drinks and gargle salt water. It's all temporary. Like 20 minutes later, I'm like angry because my throat's hurting again. So, uh, yeah, anyway, it's, yeah, I've just been sick and then my back has been brutal. I went for the x-rays. I'm going to see the doctor. She wants to see me back because they've got the x-rays back now. So, um, but I've been having issues with the left side going numb all the way down to the toes and it's just been annoying, man. It's been, yeah, the work was like, I worked this week, but I was not, I don't even remember what I did. I literally cannot. I was in meetings. I can't recall conversations. Like it was just not a good week. You'll find out next week if this past week was. Yeah. What did we, not. what did we okay this week? That's we'll right. Find, well, you're starting to get responses from emails you sent and you're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> what did we do? Uh, we need an HR team. Yeah, um, so yeah, it was, uh, man. how's your back? it's annoying. It's, it's been super frustrating because it's not, um, it's different. It's like, uh, it's a different pain than what I've normally had. So I went and saw my Cairo guy, he did some work on it, but, um, but the plan is to get an MRI done. I want to just know what the heck's going on, but I'm going to have to do that privately because it's like a year, year and a half long wait to do it. So what I'm just going to go do it private. My MRI, I, I'm getting an MRI on two different parts of my back and it was about a four month wait. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know exactly how long it would be. She'll probably tell me when I meet with her this coming week. But if it's anything long, I'm just going to pay to go and get one done privately. Well, hopefully the MRI so, is the type of test you need that'll give you those answers. It, it will at least give them money. information as to what's going on in, in my back. Because it's basically going to be from neck to waist. So, um, but yeah, other than that, what I played, but I've just been sick. Like I can't, we finished watching a show. We're going to start Fallout next week. And, uh. That's kind of it. I can't really think too much about what else happened this week because sure, sure. it was a blur, man. I spent a lot of time doing absolutely nothing. Well, it sounds like you got some Path of Exile time in. Thank you very much this week for taking time and testing uh, Age of Empires with me. Yeah, they've got crossplay now on Age of Empires, which yeah, is cool. Yeah, they added it about a month ago. And uh, the last time Age of Empires 4 was on sale on console for a ridiculous cheap price, it was the week before they announced 
oh, cross they platform. So there was oh. yeah. So like I see it on sale. I'm like, sweet, I love the game. I have zero reason to buy it on console. Yeah, like, there's yeah. no, no point. And then the very next, and it was like dirt cheap. And then the next week, they're like, hey, cross platforms coming in the next patch. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. What? And I like, I look into it. I'm like, yeah, it's like it's legit cross platform. And I'm like, you gotta be. What, what, what? So anyway, so I was kind of disappointed about that. But then, um. Because Xbox is easy, like I can talk to through Discord through my Xbox mm-hmm. or just use my phone, whatever. So it'd be easy to play with people on PC. Anyway, so it's finally come around again and it, it was on sale. So I picked it up with the rest of my birthday cash that was uh, given to me in February. And uh, it's it's cheating, man. Yeah, it's it's lit. It's legit cheating. It is so fun. So first, thank you for testing the cross platform with me and making sure that it works. It's 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 really streamless outside it of well, like, it's not the, the adding friends is a bit of a pain in the butt, but it did. It did work in the end. We did figure it out. You know what I discovered? Hmm. That's Steam's fault. Steam in its profile setup. There's no way there's nowhere in the system for you to go. Hey, do you want to link these profiles to your to your or these these accounts to your profile? I looked it up like crazy. The only way to link my Xbox account to my Steam account like this is to load a game that is cross-platform, and then you go through the process in the game. Yeah, but it's still—it's not a Steam thing. It's specific to the game for how it pulls that data. I'm actually curious well, but, if I would have even been able to see you if I hadn't connected my Xbox profile. Well, but that's 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 the thing though. That's how it connects to Steam. Because if I was able to link my accounts earlier, we would have seen that no problem. Like we would have done that years ago. Just link the profile for the sake of having it linked, right? Like that's just how it yeah, works. And so that we wouldn't have even had to go through any troubleshooting if that was the case. But it was very smooth after that fact. I was able to do modded maps and everything. So I was I was the last two nights I've been um getting comfortable with the buttons and seeing mm-hmm. how things play. Like how do you select an, mass units? It's so easy, man. Really? It is so easy. Yeah. And the, it, my town centers can auto populate people. It just as it, it just automatically makes villagers for me. Well, Every what single about when you want to empire, stop? it's an easy button to hit. Hmm. And from anywhere on the map, I can, it, it's really crazy. And anywhere on the map, I can do anything. It's very quick. It, the amount, it, it's just, it's so, so nice. Hang on. Hang on. So hang now on. you actually have guys all the time. <laughs> Just wait, just wait. So yeah, uh, villagers can be auto assigned to a specific resource. Mm -hmm. They have like generic things where it's like, okay, I want to be like 60% food, 20% um, wood and gold and stone. Like, and, but they just have a radial wheel where you can pick and choose. And then it auto assigns the villagers to those things. Like I always had groups for my villagers, Mm -hmm. right? Seven, eight, nine, and zero. I don't have to group them at all anymore. When I'm going to build someone, it just takes the closest person and it puts them right as soon as they're finished, it puts them right back to what they were. What doing if you before. want more than one person to build it? Oh, that's easy. I can click on the building and just assign more villagers and it just oh, takes cool. them from just wherever the and then ones. Yeah, or, or whichever, and then it takes it and puts them right back. Um cool. town centers constantly make village. Oh, it's it's so fun. It just I won't get into it, but I, yeah, I had cool. a really fun time getting used to it. And so that whenever we decide to play, maybe we again, should try one tonight. Sure, I'm down if um, you're after. after it. And dark, it was yeah. it was a lot of fun, but because of how easy all of that is, you know how it was always the Mongols because the Mongols were the easiest for me to play, and yeah, there was know. less the least amount of micromanagement. Sure. Well, now they actually aren't the even easiest. though the Mongols do actually have a decent amount of micromanagement if you move and do all the stuff that some of the crazy people do with Mongols. But yes, oh, I know what you yeah, mean. Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah. Goodness me, Mm-mm. no way. Uh, no, I'm not playing with a bow with a reaper. Are you kidding me? I'm playing my way. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, actually, so I was playing around with some empires last night, seeing which ones were actually the least for micromanagement. Sure. And which ones were. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun to play through completely different empires. So I think I played like I could have played eight hours of Path of Exile, but I ended up playing in the last two days, eight hours of Age of Empires instead. So nice. That's cool. I'm glad it works. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to get into this week in POE, but quick shout out. I think I did it in After Dark last week, but uh, Rory from support at GGG was amazing. Uh, we did uh, our gifts. I don't even remember. I thought I brought this up before, but maybe I haven't. But anyway, I'm going to say it again. Rory from support at GGG was the best when we had to buy points. Normally buying points, not points, but like packages, the rewards for our private leagues and stuff. I, I swear I've said this before. But uh, anyway, you know what? It is uh, starting to sound amazing. familiar. I, I put see this the in note. It. Ty's got the note here. I'm going to say it anyway. Rory was awesome. 
So I love Rory from support at GG. Rory from support. We're and making only t-shirts. Rory from support at GG. <laughs> <laughs> support, support Rory from support Rory support. Rory. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. This week in POE, what do we got? Apparently unsaved changes. Just a moment. All right. Uh, let's see. Concept art, skill effects sale. Uh, oh, there was a thingy thing, uh, marketing bloopers. Did you see right. it yet? I did. You didn't. So I'm going to put a note here. We're going to watch it now. Yep. And through the magic of editing, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> there are you done. So, yeah, that was awesome. I love that they showed that and that they were so real with it. It cracks me up because I definitely know that feeling. I love the idea that he doesn't smile because people tell me all the time that I don't smile. I'm like, I am smiling. Shut up. Like, this is a smile. This is what you get. And anytime we've done video for work, there's always a set of that like, fuck, I can't fucking say it. Like, you just like mess things up. And oh, man, I love that. the Whatever they whoever was doing the video for it to amazing job. Like yes, to tie in all these job. different things to it. Oh, so good. I loved the, there was so much of the video. Like I laughed when they did the pets or the, like the music pets that were walking by yeah, yeah. and they were just like, it was just a statics camera, but then the pets go just having a fun time yeah. as he's at, but, and then there's the, the items that kept dropping with the yeah. swear words that Mark was <laughs> saying. So like Mark they actually, swear jar. They click yeah. Mark swear jar and then they start dropping. Out. Like, oh, so but good. it was, it was what he was swearing. It wasn't just yeah. random. It was so good. And I, I always like it when companies like Todd Howard would do this with every one of his big announcements. He'd always have like a token swear word that he would use. Uh, and I liked it. I, I like it. It makes it feel more real, you know, when like Chris and Jonathan and others, of course, would do the same thing. Yeah. And uh, so I always enjoyed it. But you know that they're just normal people being professional as well. And every time, every now and then you can get excited or accidentally say something. Uh, I love that when you get mark behind the camera it's just it's more swearing than it is normal i just i love it i think it's hilarious it's just fun to see that and uh i love that the company basically just put out a swearing video it's so good yeah i i love how how that works so that was yeah, really, was funny. really funny. awesome job to whoever made it mark thanks for thanks for letting it be posted i think that's hilarious you guys did great yeah super fun Jonathan was funny at the beginning too. <laughs> looking to looking Mark for Mark's approval. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, all right. What else we got this week in POE? Just patches, patches after that. And there weren't that many. No, the, I only want to talk about one specifically. So you can whip through whatever you want. The point one is there's nothing, man. We got the, like, there was a few hot fixes yep. and, and console and PC are again, like they're intertwined now. It's almost almost the same day when it comes to patches and drops and again ggg thank you for that's having good. the game come out on the same time like that's so awesome console and pc being released like i'm talking the actual league launch yeah, yeah. at the same time um but the big thing for me i mean i know there's going to be stuff i'm i'm ignoring like all the crafting and all this kind of stuff and i haven't gotten to the t17 maps or anything like that so as i'm going through this i'm not sure how much of it is positive or negative in terms of just the overall experience or personally what my opinion would be but i saw that there was a lot of buff to different drop rates right i being able to re-roll the um t17 maps with chaos i don't know if that was that this was patch or one. previous mm -hmm. and then there's just drop rates for so much different things that drop from different bosses just from the core game i ignored everything that was an acropolis specific change most of that and was so, last patch yeah the changes to drops mm, well, this one says many modifiers that can roll on a T16 can now roll on a T17. Um, there's a guaranteed reward on T17s, one of five, whether it's enhanced pack, size, item, rarity, currency, maps, or scarabs. Mm -hmm. uh, T17s have a significantly higher chance to drop from different guardians and map bosses and synthesis. There's always going to be a T17s always have. Uh, an exclusive prefix or suffix that's specific to T17s. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, there's just a bunch more that was there. And then there was also down under general improvements. There was a couple drop rate ones too. So anyway, I just thought that was um, I don't know, nice, sweet. Bring on more T17s. Yeah. So uh, the, the point one change we talked about last week, last week they brought out their hot fixes to fix the uh, where people were just spamming maps to just try and get either the seer or divination or uh, sorry not divination um divine currency 
um, conversions. And we talked about like, that was a good fix. It's not really the way that they meant the game to be played in the sense that you're just spamming maps and never actually running the maps. You're just opening them until you get those to try and get currency. So this week though, they, with their point one patch, there was a, there was a big thing happening in the community where, uh, basically what was happening is streamers and people had found that you could play T17 maps. You could roll them specific ways. One of the modifiers, which was changed in point one was the, um, uh, when a rare unique monster spawns a tormented spirit on reaching low life, uh, that's been removed as a modifier. So that, and that's important because that's one part of it. Um, then they also were playing with the all flame of, was it anarchy or whatever? It was the one that gave you rogue exiles. That one's now been changed to only being a single rogue exile. It used to be rogue exiles. So whatever. Uh, but what happened was people were finding ways to then combine that also with beyond with the beyond scarabs so that as you killed uniques, um, beyond portals would open, which would then give you more rares and uniques, which would then spawn more tormented spirits as they got to low life, which would then spawn more portals, which would, so these, these maps were insanely hard, right? Because you had very, very tough enemies, but crazy rewarding because you were getting insane amounts of drops like unbelievable amounts of drops i josh and i talked about it through the week because he wanted to see if he was asking me if we wanted to try doing it i looked into i was like man the build you would have to have to run something like that would be very hard i'm not sure i could pull that off with my build not sure he could have but it would have been something maybe we could have tried out um but there were a lot of videos about it there was a lot of content about it a lot of stuff out there and then with this point one patch they took that away they basically removed the ability for those that thing to roll the tormented spirits on reaching the life they changed the anarchy to only be a single one um i have a bit of a problem when they make changes like that i I don't want to say mid-league because we are not mid-league we're beginning of league still but we're into the league and typically they're not the type that make changes like that into the league like if they've realized that they've done something or that people are finding a way to work a mechanic that may um a, a good example is actually last league with um spires people starting yes. to realize that you could run multiple projectiles which would spawn you more of them get more purple juice and then you were just getting insane amounts of mobs and loot probably not as intended because they removed it from private leagues but they let it roll that was Maybe something they didn't expect was going to happen, but it wasn't exploiting. And I think that that's the same in this regard. I don't think this was anything that was exploiting. You had to have a very strong build. You had to really plan for it and you would get rewarded for being able to run it. My understanding is it was probably pretty heavy on their servers because you were talking about thousands and thousands of mobs that were rolling on a map. Um, I don't know the whole details as to why they would have made the changes, but I'm not a huge fan of them making a change as you get into the league. I wasn't playing this mechanic. I also couldn't care less that other people were. Other people were getting headhunters and mage bloods and car. I don't, that doesn't bother me at all. I couldn't care less. It has no effect on me. But if Josh and I had during the week decided like, hey, let's try to do this, there would have been some significant investment required for us to start planning for it, to getting the all flames, to getting the map set up properly, to getting the builds ready. And then for them to just take it away is, when it's not an exploit and it's not something, I, I just don't know. I, I don't know why they did it. It's fine that they did do it, but I don't like it because I don't think it's cool to do that as a league's already progressed. And if I think it's part of the problem, like one of the things they said this league was that they spent a month testing this league before it came out. Um, if you're going to introduce 40,000 new scarabs, you should have some understanding of how and, and all flames and all these different ways that you're going to you know, affect a map. I think it's kind of on them to understand what things people could figure out to do. And if yeah. people find ways creatively to make it do more, I'm not sure that that's a fair thing to take away afterwards. Um, yeah, they, so, they pick how many, <laughs> they pick how many scarabs are going to be released. So it's up to them to know the combinations. They know the complexity of the game. And so it's just kind of like everything else. So like it, it it is on them. And if they choose to have a whole bunch of scarabs come out all at the same time, give them credit. It's come out for all that content that they have come out with and the different interactions it could have. It has come out very smooth. Very, very smooth. I have no um, argument about the smoothness. I think it's no, great. And I sure. love the scarabs. And this maybe 
is the only public like the only thing that they've changed scarab wise as opposed to for something that the community has interacted with and taken advantage of that they're prop my 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 assumption is that they probably had something else that came to light as a result of these combinations that isn't maybe very known to the public because you're right they don't normally do this type of thing mid league um i mean i guess they did that two leagues ago as well when they just all of a sudden removed taunt from from the main league mechanic but um it's not often and sir sometimes it's from an oversight but sometimes uh, like a lot of the times even with when it comes to like bug reports that are actually going to provide some sort of hazard you know security hazard to the game uh they don't say it they delete the bug report it gets fixed but it's just silence they're just mum on the subject right so maybe there was something like that going on here that we're not aware of but it does suck when you do go through all that investment and I mean, at least they're putting together a lot better quality on release now. So you know that if something like this happens and it is an oversight that they still didn't, it's not like they were putting out crap and they barely even made alpha before they launched and now they're changing a whole bunch of stuff. So I, I think in general, the, the game's in a great spot. I'm the league itself is fine. Like it's nothing over the top for me. I am playing it quite a bit. I'm getting to a point now. I'm trying to have conversations with myself as to why am I playing? What am I trying to do right now? But um, I just, yeah, I'm just not a big fan of them. It, it, to me, if it's a bug or an exploit or something that should not be happening, that's fair. Take that out. That shouldn't be in there. But when it's the, when it's people finding a way to make your mechanics that you've introduced to the game, work together in tandem with other mechanics that you've introduced into the game it's not, i just don't think it's super cool to then go oh we don't we don't like that or, or at least if you're going to explain why like hey this if we continued to run this was going to crush the servers we were running into issues with the servers or something but explain what was the reason why you took that out was there something it was doing to the game or something that you did not intend to happen within the game that is the reason you did it or is it just because people were getting too much loot and if that's the case that's stupid but like a well, last league was ridiculous. right considering last <laughs> league i don't think too much loot was the issue well that's my problem is just like i uh again i wasn't doing it and i also could not care less if somebody has 40 headhunters and 12 mage bloods and all the cards in the world and all the divs and mirrors i don't care at all it has no effect on how i play the game i know people talk about the market blah 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 that's just silly just play the game your way and you're fine at least for me, that's how it works for me. But um, I am glad that I didn't take the next steps with Josh to try and figure out some way to make this work because it's not taking away from the fact that those things are still strong. You know, the, the, the rogue exile, it's still strong. You can still find ways to make it good. But if the thought was, I want to do this this way to really get this crazy amount of loot, but I'm going to work on building the character and getting all the stuff ready. Uh, I that's a I, I think that's a little bit uncool to do that afterwards, especially with no information as to why. I think you could have they could have made it so much better by just saying, look, this was unintended. We didn't mean for this to happen. We didn't, you know, our bad. We didn't test it, but not because you're getting too much stuff, but because it was doing something bad or something that we didn't want that I can get on board with. But they didn't have anything like that. So, yeah, it, yeah. if they need to make a change post launch make the change but when you make any changes big or small and there's no explanation as to why it, e even if it's small even if some there's a group of people that think it's in, ex insignificant if you don't explain why a big change is happening yep. the lack of explanation makes the product itself untrustworthy and yep. it, it's not like there's any poor intention from the company or the mm -hmm. people that approve this or anything like that. They're doing a great job. They're making the game better. But when you are a player and you aren't sure if the game is going to be consistent for the next exactly set of time perfect. period, yep. I agree with you 100%. then there is, and it's not like, again, it's not like a personal thing where it's like, Oh, I don't trust this person or that person or the, call. it's just, you want to trust that the game is going to be consistent and the same for three months. Yep. And then if something was weird or wonky, whatever it is, then the change happens. And so I, I hear you. I don't like, again, like I'm not on that. I, those aren't, that's not how I play the game. 
So I'm not sure how serious other people have taken it or not. Maybe there's a whole bunch of listeners that think this is a very light, uh, a long time to talk about a very light subject. Maybe there's people that are like, you need to talk about this for an hour long because it's outrageous. But well, um, and I'm not even saying it's outrageous, but I, I think how you said it there was perfect, which is there needs to be an expectation that when you put the game out, this is the game and I can plan around how you put out the game and I can play the right. game. It's completely different when you're exploiting. I'm, I, I'm not, if there's ways to dupe things or cheat, I patch that, get rid of that. But if, if people have found a creative way to make your mechanics work with each other, that's not a, that's not an us problem. No. That's a you problem and didn't test prop properly. And if you are going to change it, then you need to explain why so that there's not this thought of like, they could just do this at any point. If I find something fun and cool and they don't like it or whatever, I, they've never been like that. I'm not saying that they're no. like that, but and this makes it feel kind of like, well, you were getting too much stuff. We didn't like that. We took it away without any explanation. And it makes no sense given last league. Yeah, exactly. Last league is the, the especially the follow-up. So it must've been some sort of exploit or something that they thought was that, that probably the community just wasn't very aware of, but maybe once this process was brought to light, it kind of red flagged other situations that maybe the company or the community hadn't figured out yet or something like that. They but if it was, vulnerable. they typically patch that stuff very, very quickly. This wasn't, this was left for like, a, from the time that Josh brought it up, we're talking almost a week. It like is weird. Five or six days. So because um, even last league, you would design your maps in a way to get so much loot that it would literally crash your game. Yeah. And they just kept that in. They're like, right. they, it, I mean, we're not there, but it. it seemed like they just shrugged their shoulders at the fact and be like, that'll get fixed with the next league. It was almost like an EA electronic arts mentality where it's like, oh, there's a whole bunch of bugs in Formula 123. Ah, we'll fix it in Formula 124. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, so I don't mind that they did it because I wasn't doing it, but I do feel bad who were doing it. Sorry, feel bad for people who were doing it just because there's no explanation as to why. Sure. And, um, I feel like they need to do that. I think it's f only fair to the player base. Granted, I assume the amount of people who are taking advantage of this is a very small percentage, but you also have to remember, and GGG knows this, people watch their streamers, they watch the YouTubes of these people doing this stuff. The YouTubes. It's the YouTubes. It's aspirational content for maybe a, another player to try to aim towards. So if that person now is like, okay, I'm going to take a week spend some time, build up my character, get to that so I can do it, save up some currency, and then they take it away. It's kind of like, oh, well, that sucks. So I would have just loved to have seen a reason. I, and even if it was as simple as like our servers couldn't handle this, we were, you're talking about tens of thousands of monsters on a map. It was, we were running into server issues, something, just something, but not you. Hey, you can't have that much stuff. That's not fair. Like <laughs> we're, we're trying to afford path of exile too. Yep. We can't afford the servers that we've created or the, the demand on the servers for this yep. thing. Uh, there was a bunch of other stuff that they, they changed in this one. Um, a lot of it was good. They've fixed the ability to now do coffins with bulk selling and stuff like that, which is great uh, for people who are doing that kind of stuff. Um, I actually read through all of the bug fixes on this one just because I was a little bit curious about the stuff that had happened at the beginning, but um, yeah, that was the main thing that stuck out for me with this one. Yeah. Hmm. Well, hopefully people are still having fun with it. Yeah. Uh, you, you were mentioning that you are now at the stage is like, you're kind of burning out already. Why are you I can't playing? tell if I'm burning out. I can't really, I can't, I'm not sure where I'm at. I, so I, I wanted to try out the, the, I mean, we may as well just get into a week in POE cause I did play. I'm 97, almost 98. Just, just playing, just mapping, trying. I love the Atlas trees, having multiple Atlas trees and, you know, like playing different ideas and trying different things out. And I wanted to try the crafting side of it. And there's, uh, you can go on to craftofxl.com and actually like figure out the type of maybe boots you want to make. And then there's a graveyard button and it will help you try to figure out how many of each um, corpse should you need in order to maximize your potential to actually being able to craft that item. Really cool feature, but also you're talking like 88 corpses, which first off, the, the necropolis only holds 64, so you're going to have to itemize a bunch of them and actually hold them until you need them. Um, but I did. I tried it. I was like, okay, let's try this out, play around with it, built some boots. I sent you a picture of the boots that I sent, which was fun, but it took so much work to try and put those boots together and like I, I probably had to buy a quarter of the corpses that I needed just because when you need like 23 of the defense are scarcer well 
uh, I've been playing a lot and I've got 15. I'm going to have to buy the rest because you can't force those corpses to drop, right? You're just waiting until those ones happen to come down. Uh, so, and then also, um, I have not been able to figure out how to, you can't really focus craft um, suppression, which is tough because suppression doesn't have a tag. So like when you get corpses that are like defense or fire or mana or life or resistance there's no none of those tags relate to suppression so you're just having to try to remove a bunch of options and then suppression falls into a group of about five that could roll so you're you're getting like a one in i think i had i had it down to like a one in ten chance but when you're talking 88 corpses and you're getting a one in ten chance well i'm not going to get to craft those multiple times i just don't have the corpses for that so uh, yeah, so but it was fun. I played with the tree a lot. I I've been mapping a ton. I tried out um, back to basic on the Atlas tree, which was pretty fun. I actually played with it for a little bit. It's on the Atlas passive tree. Um, it basically removes everything. There's no additional content at all, but it rolls your um, explicits from zero to 80 percent, I think. It's like right in the middle. Right just, above yeah, Kirk. I'm just reading it right now. Your maps yeah. randomly have between zero to 80% more explicit modifiers, extra content cannot appear in your maps, cannot apply influence to your maps. No, oh, apply. So they can still be influenced, but you can't apply influence to it. Correct. Like you can't put like a shaper scarab on or anything like that. Hang on, hang on. Interesting. So I'm on, so this is unrelated and I do want to get to it because you sent me some insane pictures with some insane numbers. And so I do want to mm. uh, regard yeah. your map modifiers. Um, but this is answering a question from before. Now, this is from POE Planner, and normally uh, our, our listeners will let us know when we've screwed up mm -hmm. uh, in an episode or when we have something wrong, which we appreciate. That's not criticism. Like, it's that's that's how you learn. And uh, this here in POE Planner says, because this is talking about extra content, right? Extra content cannot appear in your maps, cannot be influenced. So it has a list of what extra content is. And at the end, it says Alva, Einhard, Jun, Jun, and Nico missions are extra content. Right. So they won't well, show up. Because they weren't before. And right. we were wondering at the beginning of the league because they're just it's a completely different interaction with them now. If they were actually considered extra content, if they had a different tag. So mm -hmm. uh, again, that's not a GGG source, but maybe that's where PUE Planner got it from. Cool. Yeah. So... So uh, crazy zero to eighty percent more explicit modifier effects, which was and the focus was just on, um, um, and then I was also focusing on corpses. So just getting very large qual quantity rarity pack size, and then I was focusing on the necropolis crafts and stuff like that, or the necropolis corpses. And it was fun, but I found myself feeling like the one nice thing about it is I also went the route I can't remember what it's called, but it's a very very bottom left of the uh, Atlas passive tree regarding Necropolis where you can't apply oh. all flames and it just um, modifies the modifiers to the, the to the enemies and sometimes I think it's like a 50% chance of giving them double but what was nice is I basically just threw the map in and hit start like the old times you know sure. there's no second menu that would come up you just run it and go um and it was it was fun for a bit I think I probably did about 40 40 or 50 maps with that setup um and then I went back to my other one which was like stacking shrines stacking strong boxes i love shrines they're that's like my give me my headhunter without giving me a headhunter like you just feel super strong with them um i felt like i actually got more corpses going the route of just stacking the mechanics that i like which put lots of you know mobs in the map and then playing with scarabs that like give you know 40 percent increased magic pack size and more shrines and opening strong boxes multiple times and strong boxes are really cool because the strong boxes also take into account if you've applied all flames so whatever mobs show up that are going to be in that map that's also the mobs that will be within the strong boxes so i think i did a chayula all flame which means those mobs can drop the chayula things and i had so many strong boxes that in one map i had 99 like i was one away from creating the um breach chayula. For chayula. wow um but i had more fun playing that way so uh, i haven't figured out yet what I want to do and maybe I that's why I'm sort of feeling a little bit like well like the crafting to me is really cool but it's so much work like I would love to try and actually craft some of my other items the problem is on all the items I would consider crafting I want suppression so a gloves boots helmet I would love to try and play around with crafting those three but I want suppression which kills 
trying to craft it because you're t you're literally talking like 80 corpses per craft and you can get it maybe to a one in 10, one in six chance. Like it's just really, really hard. To and get with the build much. you're doing, you're not doing lots of poison or evasion. Like you, you just need evasion base types, but you're going with a lot of red and blue gems. So you're still, you're going to be off coloring as well. Yeah. I've switched over to detonate dead, which is a ton of fun. I'm oh, having okay. so much fun with it. I'm not using the minions anymore, but, uh, it, yeah, it's it's made it a little bit tough for me to like want to try it. So then I was like, well, maybe I'll play around with some of the rings or the amulets. Like I, being able to pick the base type now is great for crafting that stuff. But again, you're still talking 80 corpses. The corpses when they drop are completely random, right? So it's not like you're really controlling how many chaos modifier corpses am I going to get. So I right now have almost two full quad tabs full of corpses. And I still don't have what I need to try and put it together. And I really don't want to go through and buy corpses. It was exhausting to buy corpses through the trade site. It was like doing sextons back. Like it just was not fun. I didn't enjoy it at all. So, um, yeah, I don't know. The game is fun. I'm enjoying it, but I don't want to roll. I would love to try another build, but I'm in the same boat. I always am. I don't want to do campaign again. So yeah, I, I like it. I do like it, but I completely ignore the necropolis crafting side besides collecting the corpses. Uh, which I am doing, which is kind of, I, I find there's some weird integration with corpses and the Atlas tree and feeling like you're losing out if you don't take some of the necropolis stuff in the Atlas passive tree, which I don't like, especially because the content is forced. Like you are going to experience the league content within the map. So if you don't have some of these bonuses, you're kind of losing out. But uh, yeah, I, the three Atlas passives are amazing. I love the new scarabs, even though you get a lot of stuff you're not going to use. It's still fun to have it. If you ever decide yeah. to switch things up, but with the amount of scarabs that there are now, I wish there was more content you could block. It's still the, just the same 10 mechanics that are extra content, but there's so much more extra content out there now. Uh, of course, for me, my specific is blocking master missions. I, I have, want nothing to do with Alva and because I have eight out of 10 block nodes up, I get a lot of Alva and that sucks. I mean, I could sell her, sure, but it's still annoying, right? I, like the whole point of the Atlas passive tree and blocking content, especially with the increased percentages for certain content to show the whole design of the new Atlas passive system in Scarabs is to not only because it is a game of RNG, but to, for the most part, get a lot of content, the maps you want, the extra content you want, the scarabs you want, you're not seeing content you don't want. Like that's the whole design around it is really customizing it to be all around your preferences. So I think they need to touch up, um, maybe even just change those nodes instead of just have the five on the left and five on the right. Uh, is it five or six, whatever it is, five, yeah. um, you know, make it 10 and 10, like put every extra content node on there and then maybe just decrease the bonus to 1% instead of or 2%. Or put them in different parts of the tree. Like if Something. breach tends to be on the left, put, or right, put the breach, no breach somewhere on the left or something. Cause I do agree with you. <laughs> something. I wondered why you couldn't target certain, um, scarabs. Like there, there are a lot that you can target and say, give me a hundred percent more chance of this one. Somebody did say in one of the comments as to why that was, but it still doesn't make sense to me. Like if I want to play the, the, the goal is definitely, like you said, they give you a lot of control now over the map, how much is going to show. Yeah. I love that. I can have a shrine. It, every single it's map. Much I less can chance have. based. It's much more about being the guarantee. You're right. not going to get this and you are going to get this. Yeah. So uh, I do agree. It would be nice for them. And hopefully that's a plan maybe for a future Atlas is to give you a bit more control over what you block. Cause it's weird that they didn't really change it, um, too much with that, but yeah. Yeah. I keep forgetting that they added the Atlas or the league mechanic to the Atlas passive tree. I love mm -hmm. the concept. Mm -hmm. uh, I've read the same things as you from people in our discord community that uh, some of it does feel forced, but we it, it's the first league. So like, I, I, of course, it doesn't change that this selection, certain selections feel forced. Uh, we know that's not what GGG likes because they changed all the pinnacle boss stuff. And even just how they were organized and chance to drop certain fragments, they changed that prior to this league. And then they changed that again for this league because they don't want certain keystones and aspects of the Atlas passive to feel forced mm. or required to reach certain content. So um, we know it was unintentional. Doesn't change the fact that you still have to go through this league. But I like the concept of the league being added to the Atlas passive tree, even if it's minor. 
like just, just small little things that they don't have. But hopefully GGG remembers or acknowledges for a future league that adding a temporary league to the Atlas Pass tree, though awesome, it doesn't have to be epic. No, it, it just needs really to be minor. just right. Just personalize it. Just make it feel like you have an impact on it. I, like I keep the, forgetting because I'm I bounce between league and standard, so I just plan my Atlas passive for both. So it's just around the standard one. I'm I'm in love with what I'm doing. I re I went this. Sorry, did you have something to say? I was, I was just going to say what they put up in the top right hand side of the Atlas passive. That makes sense to me. That is like, oh, I would like to see more of the plus twenty five or plus fifty to tier modifiers or like. You're you're just specifying what types of corpse you want to drop, but yet on the left hand side, you've got one that hey, when you got fifty percent chance every single time that you claim a corpse to get a tormented spirit to come out. Well, that's a big deal. If also on the Atlas passive tree, you've got benefits to tormented spirits and other True. things. So it's kind of weird where like that doesn't really make sense. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's not league specific in the sense that I'm getting a benefit to the league side. I'm now getting something else out of the league mechanic and i find that a little bit odd hmm. interesting i'm sure there's people that feel the opposite as well i don't know well but that's but interesting like you no, said, no, no, like i get where you're coming from like i'm not yeah like sure, the top sure. right is I, cool I it. It, you control what or you have a little more control over the type of corpse that are dropping that makes sense because it's necropolis i find the other ones are a little bit odd where it's not specific to a boost to necropolis it's actually a boost to the map itself which is then a little weird because then you feel like you need to take it yeah yeah so Anyway, sorry, how's your no, PoE good. week going? Uh, this was a, a unique week. Like, I'm still very much into my League character. I'm really enjoying my zombie playthrough. Uh, my zombie build is slightly different than the one that I posted. I'm still really enjoying the concept of trying to test it, and I really want to take it far. The idea is, like, with my zombie build that I post, it deals with bone armor, uh, block chance being applied to me, and uh, it has some help there with uh stationary figures so because i have arctic armor and tempest shield as well so for the block chance and then physical that 21 percent physical damage mitigation when you're stationary i know it does it for fire too but it's just so hot man it's so sexy <laughs> it's oh it's just i love it i love it but but what i'm trying with me is instead of tempest shield and arctic armor i'm putting on purity of elements and instead of having oh man i was talking about this last week but now i forget so hang on i just i i, I play the necromancer all the time and i can never remember them the keystone notes so instead of mistress of sacrifice which has my offerings impact me i'm going with commander of darkness so i'm getting rid of all that defense from block chance right and this uh the stationary mitigation as well I'm adding purity of elements, which yes, isn't the strongest, but I'm coupling that with purity, uh, or sorry, commander of darkness. And that's giving me 69% resists, of course, immunity to all elemental stuff, but then it is a good damage buff as well for my big minion build. Uh, but I'm in having that extra 70% elemental resists. I'm really hoping along with like the complete immunity for ailments, I'm hoping that frees up my flasks more than it normally would and i'm hoping that it opens up mods on my gear a lot easier as well so it's sure. way like i'm i'm i i was capped at chaos resist in like and like i'm I'm doing solo cell phone but i'm like doing like re, uh, i don't know i call it real solo cell phone like i'm i'm not doing like any crafting outside of the actual crafting bench where you add a modifier to something that dropped on the ground that's all I'm doing. Like I'm still on a four link. I'm in T tens and I'm still on a four link with my hell. I'm on zombies, min, um, summon phantasm, minion speed and predator support. And I'm having in T tens. I'm having a great time with it, but like, that's the kind of solo cell phone that I'm doing. And I've been capped at chaos res for a long time. It's easy to find a shield that has crit reduction to it or flat physical damage mitigation. And I'm needing to find very little resists on my gear so I can really focus on like being much pickier with different mods or look for completely different ones because I don't have to have, you know, two or three really good resist rolls on certain gear. Attributes are so much easier to find on my amulet. Having a free prefix for something fancy as opposed to, well, shoot, you know, I'd really like this and this and this. Like, just honestly, that extra 70 resist, uh, elemental resist. I mean, there's also a lot of elemental resist I'm just getting from the tree. I don't go looking for it like you like to on the tree. Uh, 
but it's there innately. So I think when I finished the math at the end of the day with out gear, getting everything that I wanted, like all just my gem, vanilla gems, vanilla tree, I think I only needed like 50 elemental resists across the board. And so it's so easy to cap all the other things that I want. So I'm hoping with that item freedom, it makes the game a little bit more fun for me. Like I'm less married to, even though I have the mentality of use any items you want, there's still the required things you have to get. And so I'm hoping this kind of freedom allows me to have even more freedom with my items. But even though on paper it's less defensive, I'm really hoping that it becomes much easier to be way more defensive because of the item freedom that's there. So that's the idea. And that's, I'm really excited to play on PC, but my, my damn wife, <laughs> she is, on it. she is, oh, she is absolutely loving streaming and broadcasting and Stardew Valley came out with its PC update. She, who knows when it'll come out, but I mean, Stardew Valley people have been in love and just desperately waiting for this, this update that finally came. And I mean, Sims has been her favorite game since the dawn of time. She hasn't touched Sims in forever. She brought my wife broadcasted Path of Exile last night. Of course, but what I'm saying is like, this is all PC stuff, right? And so, and that's even like, she's doing all this with Dragon's Dogma. She hasn't even passed Dragon's Dogma yet, which is we have on console. And so she's just been such a PC hog and I'm loving it. Like, it's not a criticism at all. It's just, she's just changed what she's doing with her uh, personal time a lot lately. And so I haven't had the... PC available to me as much. And she's already asking, like, we're only two weeks in to the league. And she's already asking when our private league is going to be. And <laughs> you're not playing it this time. <laughs> well, I'm, like now we're at the stage of of our marriage, I guess, and her PUE mm-hmm. career where our private league, we're, we're splitting the time 50-50. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like last awesome. private league, she yeah, actually she really wanted to play, but she she works, right? I Normal she business hours. So she did. Yeah, yeah. And I I just stay at home. So I'm like, in my head, I'm like, man, I really want her to play PoE, and this is really cool that she's, you know, kind of involving herself in the community and stuff. So I'm like, all right, you get the computer every night, every night you want it, you can have it, except of course when we record. And uh, I'll just play during the day, and if you're fine with the next ten days of having the bare minimum chores being done, right? Great, <laughs> that's awesome. And it worked great, so I think that's what's going to happen this time. But she's already like planning for it and waiting for it. It's like, ah, oh, shoot, okay, I got to get all this playing time in with these other games before. She's like, what do I have? Like three weeks? I'm like, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Yeah, You're more really eager than anyone funny. else in the community. <laughs> like nobody's asking yet. I so, did get a uh, message from somebody yesterday or two days ago saying that they're already thinking about yeah. the private league. I was like, what? Calm down. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it's it's been fun, but as a result of all this, I've been on console. Mm-hmm. And so some of that was, you know, the excitement of getting Age of Empires and figuring that out so I could be efficient the first time we try cross-platform. Uh, Dragon's Dogma is still a lot of fun. But then, of course, I wanted to... It, it's funny, like, I was, uh, I'm was, i so stoked that console was released at the same time as PC, this league. But this is the one league where I didn't really take advantage of that. And so it was, I I went through the standard process and it's seriously such a stream seamless process. Like they've really narrowed it down. What What do you mean? Turning the maps from one, like converting the maps from 323 to 324. So smooth. It's one of my favorite things to actually watch the process of maps leaving or entering said tab. Oh, it's so much fun. And then with all the veiled scarabs that they had. I had hundreds and hundreds of Veiled Scarabs. Uh, Veiled Scarabs are Scarabs. It's like a stacked deck, but for a Scarab. You open it up and it's a random Scarab. And so, so much of what they had in the game, I forget what kind of stuff it was, whether it was like invitations. I think invitations just got deleted. I think sextants turned into Scarabs. But then, of course, there were other Scarabs that no are no longer Scarabs. Like everything that was rusted and winged and all polished all that kind of stuff that just they all turned into veiled scarabs so i had hundreds i've never of heard of a veiled scarab is that was that done for this change that you yes just... but they also did add it to the core drop pool now there are veiled scarabs that can drop now i saw that in one of the patch well, i've never that heard that up. before huh. and so anyway that's that's basically though like i said it's a stacked deck for scarabs it's hmm. what scarab could this be and then you open it up so that was a lot of fun. Did to you go have through. to open them all? Yes. And uh, thank you, Sid. I'm pretty sure it was Sid. Sorry, this was like a week and a half ago. So sorry if I'm getting it wrong. But Sid, thank you so much. 
uh, you, I was going to open them all individually, one at a time. Oh, oh my God. Oh, look at that one. Oh, look at that one. But then Sid said that I could just take the Veiled Scarabs to the to a vendor and quote unquote sell 60 of them. And then they just come back as all the random oh, ones. Okay. So that was huge Whew, thank because the control clicking stuff was, yeah, yeah. So now what would have been really nice is if GGG had updated their controller UI so that I knew how to throw everything in my inventory over and get it all back because I couldn't do that. So I still had to individually click on everything to send it over and send it back. Well, you know what you say that they faster. brought in that thing where when you're trading now, you can like control shift. I think it's control shift click to send all of like your chaos into the trade window, but that doesn't exist for transferring all your stuff into your, in, into your stash. And that really bugs me. Like if I've got Weird. like 40 or 50 chaos in my inventory, why can't I control shift click them to throw them into my stash tab? Why do I still have to control click each individual one? I tried it the, the other day and I was like, what the F? Because if somebody trades me, let's say I, I, I sold a divine for some, because I need some chaos. So now I've got whatever. I don't remember how many it is. It's not much. It's like 150 or something. I don't remember what, no, it was chisels. I was buying chisels. So I had 400 chisels for a divine, but I couldn't control shift click the chisels into the stash. I had to control click each stack. Hmm. Not a fan. Fix that. <laughs> yeah guys um so yeah so it was a lot of fun going through the standard experience i got to try out my atlas passive tree completely fleshed out minus a couple nodes i think a uh, minus six there's no i forget anyway like i'm i'm, I'm almost it's basically a full-fledged tree and i went through and i got to play with it as opposed to just be excited for it and sometimes that backfires on me like I'm playing league and I'm going through the map process or the, the completion process. It's going slow, but it's going steady and I'm enjoying it. But you know, I don't play as much as other people. So it's going to take me a few weeks to flesh out the Atlas passive tree, but it's exciting to go through because you're excited for these notes. Yes. I finally get to block this. Yes. I finally get that on completion. Yes. Okay. Sweet. I can finally. And it's like, I don't know what it is, but it's like every single time I select which, which, what, what's that? What's that called? Hang on. Vivid Memories, that's the one where it gives a chance for a boss to drop a synthesis map. It's like the very first map I do after selecting that. It's like they have a secret code where you're guaranteed to get a synthesis map. It's, it's every single time. I absolutely love it. So anyway, but so normally what happens is I'm excited as a, as a league player to go through and flesh out my Atlas passive tree, but then I'll do it on console and I'll get the whole thing right away and I'll play a few maps. I'm like, oh, that's actually not working the way that I wanted. And then so I'll change it up and I'll figure it out and I'll find a fun way to play it. But then all of a sudden in, on league where I don't have the currency, I don't have that. And I was excited. Now I'm not excited to progress because that Atlas passive tree is a huge part of the motivation for me as well, just like yourself to play. And so when I'm not excited for it, I don't have the currency. It's like, oh no. So sometimes it kind of backfires. This league, it did not. Uh, this league, like I said, I'm blocking everything except for uh, blight and ritual. And it's not because I actually like those things. I like that the extra enemies, like I love extra enemies, just give me more XP. I really like that. Uh, oils are extremely valuable in this game. They have, uh, they're invaluable really in this game. So I, I just don't block that. And ritual, I like the shopping experience. It's fun. Sure. That's <laughs> awesome. I, oh, there's so much crap. It's so often there's so much crap and I have sure. zero investment into ritual. It's just, oh, there's a ritual. Okay. And then it's a whole bunch of stuff and I like bosses, right? And I like... I mean, some of the enemies are a pain in the butt, but just with some of combos, like when you get two or three enemies that have that like mana siphoner circle around them and you're in a ritual and you're like, like trying to going in circles. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like, uh, okay, like time out, time yeah. out game, a little, little bit more effort into your combos here. But um, so, yeah, but anyway, I like, I like the shopping experience and ritual. Every essence I hope is an essence of fear, that kind of thing. So, you know, it's fun. My my personal headhunter, Justin, is called Packed with Energy. <laughs> That's the Nico I love one. That one. I Nico, take that yeah. one too. Oh, it's huge. I get like for me, I'm getting ready to puke after I've clicked the second node of Nico, right? Because uh for those listening, Packed with Energy, that's the one where you get plus one to max resists, uh 35% increased damage, which doesn't matter to me because I'm a minion player, and then 15% increased movement speed for each vein, Nico vein you click on in your maps. So, and you can 100% Nico in every single map if you want to, is, without yeah, much so, investment. So I really like that. And that's another part of the item freedom thing that I quite liked. I'm still conflict. Like, I love that node, but I'm still conflicted with it because 
Like that's actually impacting my gear. That's giving me 45% movement speed. That's giving me plus three to max resists. And it's giving me damage over just 105% damage like that. That's that's different than I can't think of anything else on the Atlas passive tree that impacts my gear like that directly. Like sure. I, I literally don't have to care about movement speed because I have withering step with my build and I'm going to get 45% increased movement speed. I mean, you can map. get a map though where you're not hitting the third or second one for quite a while into the map, right? Sure. But, but yeah. I'm like, I'm fine with two nodes. Give me that extra 30% <laughs> movement speed and I'm happy, right? If I put 30% movement speed on my boots and then have this packed with energy node, it's too fast for me. I don't like it. Do you know what else I played with with regards to Nico this league? I'd never tried it before. It's just up from um, Packed with Energy, but it's called uh, The Price of Progress. And it's Voltaxic Sulfite Veins and Chests Found in Your Maps Contain Doom Spirits. That oh, is so I was so curious. Cool. What, yeah, tell me what so Doom Spirits are. Three, I was really one curious. One of three things. Every time you click a Voltaxic uh, Vein, it has this really cool circle around it. But every time you click it, there's one of three things that will happen. One is... A uh, tormented spirit will come out. So a tormented Expected, spirit just sure. comes out and does. The second is uh, one of those low tier um, um, shrines comes out. So you just get a random shrine just pops out beside it. But the third one is it just creates a strong box, which follows the rules of the Atlas tree for strong boxes. Okay. So I will always, almost always have at least in a map one time where I'm getting a free strong box that follows all the rules of the scarabs and the rest of my Atlas passives with regards to it's rare, it's corrupted. How many times can I maybe open it? It's really fun. That's cool. I, I like strong boxes. I like them rare and I have the selection as well that they're mostly going to be hopefully going to be currency. Mm -hmm. but I really wanted the price of progress. I just didn't have the space for it. So I didn't have it because I was already a hundred percent Nico without the travel nodes to get there. So it was a little out of the way. But I, I, really I went there it. for those two Nico nodes to get to the hundred percent. Cool. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'm blocking lots of content. I'm enjoying the shopping. I have guaranteed strong boxes. I'm hoping that are going to be currency. The rest is all like completion stuff, like getting um, sulfite on completion, Jun progress on completion, uh, conquers, shaper, um, elder or not elder um, guardians, conquers, synthesis, uh, and then there was just because it's right in between some of those clusters. There's oh, and then of course because I like completion, final mop bass. Uh, so there's some scarab investment like. Um, increased chance for bosses to drop scarabs and mm -hmm. rares dropping scarabs. And so uh, completion is my primary investment. I'm big on bosses. So I always have the Keystone Destructive Play or its previous versions where that just adds more random bosses to the fight at the end, which I really yep. like. Um, and then, of course, like all the map ones, like shaping the skies, shaping mountains, shaping the world. So I always have all those. So it doesn't let me invest because I'm just big on that completion. No matter what the game is going to throw at me, I love that extra chance of getting all these special things. So it doesn't leave me a lot, but I fully invested into beyond in everything that I wanted. I'm not like I don't have every beyond node, but the beyond nodes that I don't have, I wouldn't have wanted anyway. So and it's absolutely perfect. And I just I just love beyond because it's one of those things. It's not a timed event. You go through at your own pace. But no matter what, as soon as you're finished killing stuff, just more guys come at you. It's just more and more and more. But I enjoy those fights. And the funny thing is, is I enjoy the fights more than I enjoy the loot. Like the, the Do loot you take endless time though with it? Like the one that where you can't spawn the boss? Far left. It's the big one. I assume you take that no. one? Nope. No, oh, no. Why? And I have Pale Clarion at the top. Beyond demons in your maps have a 100% chance to be followers of Baydet. Yeah, I don't know, because I like the boss fights. I know well, that having though, the boss show up just stops keep in mind, the beyond. Yeah, it stops the beyond, so yeah, you're fine with that? But I, I like the, yeah, I like the boss fights. Hmm. So Cool. I, but, I mean, the rewards suck. Like, I don't care about tainted anything. It's not going to do anything for me. Like, just I'm very rares. picky in my filter with what corrupted items actually show. Sure. So it's just it's just for the sake of the extra extra fighting, extra fun. And uh, I'm absolutely loving it. I'm really looking forward to progressing farther and seeing how my tested lead character goes. Cool. Sweet. All right. Let's if my up. wife gets off the computer. God, rude.
Uh, let's wrap this up. Forever XL 236. I'm Justin AK Tags. And I'm Tyler Wrecker of Days. Patrons will catch you in After Dark. Everybody else will see you next week in 237. If you're looking for more information, find down below. We got a website, foreverxl.com. We're on Twitter, foreverxl82. We have a very fun Discord. Pop in there and say hi. And patrons, other ways to support the podcast, you will find them down below. Goodbye. Word.